Whenever I press record, a helicopter goes over. It's like my helicopter signaling button. Hi folks, welcome back to the show. As promised, today I'm gonna to give you a little bit of an overview of the structural steel work that we had to put in in the loft. We've got cranked steel beams. It was, in my view, a little bit overkill, but it's one of those things, you know, if the structural engineer asks for it, you need to do it because that's what ultimately gets signed off by building regs. And if you don't do it, then building regs just won't sign it off because they're just gonna check. Building regs aren't gonna tell you what you need to put in. All building regs will do is they'll say, you need to get a structural engineer to design it, then show us the plans, and then we'll just make sure that what you've put in matches up to the plans that the structural engineer came up with. So there's no way around it, really. But we've talked about these steels a fair bit over the course of this build, and now is really the time to show you them doing their job and what they were for. So if you remember, we've got a cranked steel beam here, and by cranked steel beam, it means it, well, it's made of box section, uh, 120 mil box section, and it runs from that pillar with the uh, pad stone on top over there, and it runs all the way along, all the way over this side, and then it follows the angle of the roof down to sit on top of, uh, well, it's essentially on top of the lintel that runs across the window, but obviously we've got brickwork on top of the lintel, we've then got the wall plate, and we've got an extra bit of uh, wall plate underneath it. The structural engineer was happy with that. It's not really a problem. There's plenty bearing on here. That goes all the way back to, to the back side of the roof. So we've got a big steel plate on the bottom of there, and then that just bears through this wall plate into the brickwork, and then onto the heavy duty lintel that's under here. Quite a big bit of steel that. Um, the guys at Iwell did a, an awesome job with it. We got this made ages ago, right near the start of the project, because we had to get the one put over the bathroom, which you can't see, but I'll show you some photographs. But th there's an identical beam sitting over the bathroom, uh, basically just behind where that bit of wood is over there. But obviously we wouldn't have been able to do the bathroom plastering and get the bathroom ceiling put up and stuff until that bit of steel was in. So we had to get that put in quite early on. And because we knew we needed two identical bits of steel, it made sense to have both of them made at the same time. And what that steel does is it provides extra support for the hip because we've kind of mangled the hip roof a little bit to extend it. And the structural engineer did say that because we don't really know much about the structural integrity of the existing timbers, some of them might be a little bit thin and whatnot, that he wanted to see just something that would support the new hip and uh, just make up for the fact that we've taken quite a few of the timbers out that were supporting the, the old hip. So as per usual, the first thing that we check are the architect's drawings just to see what they've kind of specified and get the general lay of the land from there. We're looking at this room here. Remember that this whole side of the house here, that's new, this where the blue dotted line is, that's effectively where the old wall was, but that's actually showing where the architect thinks a steel beam should go. But it's a structural engineer who's gonna be making the decisions on this. You can see, I don't know if you can read, raked tail steelwork as engineer's details. So what the architect's basically doing there is fobbing it off to the structural engineer. And we've also got the lintel above the window here, steelwork as engineer's details. So effectively what the architect is saying is refer to the structural engineer plans for this part of the build. So here are the structural engineer plans, and this is what building regs will ask to see before you can go ahead with your project. If you don't get these sort of plans signed off in advance, you are going to potentially be in a very tricky situation later down the line. And the bit that we're looking at here is this bit that's marked C. So we've got over here a cranked steel beam. That's the one that we've just put in. And we've got one over here above the bathroom as well. And the structural engineer has said cranked 120 by 126.3 SHS, which I believe is steel hollow section, roof support members, beams to be cranked to follow existing roof ceiling profile C detail C. We will look at detail C very shortly. 
But just so you can orientate yourself, everything on this left-hand side here is the new part of the house, the new bit of the extension above the garage, and everything on this right-hand side is the existing house. And as I say, this steel is above the bathroom that was put in quite a while ago, and the steel that we've put in more recently is this one here, and as you can see, it sits on this CB90HD lintel that sits across the window, so it sits on the end of that lintel, and on the other end, it sits on a pad stone on that kind of pillar pier thing that was built earlier on. And you can also see here the beam that has to sit across the top of these two bits of steel. So it's two lots of 200 by 50. It's a C16 timber. I think we ended up using C24, but whatever. But then delving into this in a bit more detail, let me just zoom in on this section. It says denotes location of load-bearing timber studs off structure at ceiling level to support roof members above. And what the structural engineer has planned for here is this beam that sits across the top of both bits of steel, and that beam essentially just supports this one stud. It also kind of technically supports this one here, but that is actually sitting on the steel, so if you didn't need this one here, you wouldn't need this beam going across between the two steels because as I say, that only supports this one stud here. And then the remaining five studs are all sitting directly on the steel itself, or they're actually sitting on a wall plate on top of the steel, which makes it easier to kind of attach everything together. But from a load bearing perspective, it's the steel taking the weight. So we've got a two by 100 by 50 over here. So two lots of 100 by 50, which basically makes it 100 by 100 stud. They're all 100 by 100 studs. One there and one there to support the old hip timbers. One in the middle here to support the end of the new ridge. So from here over to here is the new ridge timber. And then we've also got two studs over on this side supporting the new hip timbers. So this is the new hip bit of roof running diagonally kind of down here. And he wanted to see a couple of studs supporting that. You can see it here in relation to all of the new hip timbers. So we've got the jack rafters coming down here, jack rafters down here. We've got the new ridge and the new hips coming down diagonally. And you can see the support beams or the support studs and where they need to be located. This, by the way, is also where we find out what size timbers we needed to use for our roof. And this is where the structural engineer said the main hip roof is to include minimum 150 by 50 C16 rafters at 600 centres uh, or 125 at 400. I think we've ended up with 150 by 50 jack rafters at 400 centres with C24 timber, so it's way beyond what was specced. And we've got 225 by 50s for the hips and the ridge. And then finally, here's the detail C that we talked about. Beam to be fully welded at crank position, pitch and plane of beam to match the slope of the existing ceiling. And then over here, we've got 225 by 100 by 10 bearing plate welded centrally to the web of the cranked beam, blah, blah, blah. And that sits on either on the lintel or the wall plate or whatever, because there's two beams and it's slightly different for, for each beam, but you get the general idea. It's sitting on the inner leaf of brickwork effectively. And then the other end of it is sitting on a pad stone on top of the pillar that we talked about earlier. So with all of that in mind, let's have a look at what that looks like in real life. There is the new hip on that end. So you can see the new hip timbers coming down diagonally there. That's the new ridge timber. And then if we look all the way back to here, here is the old hip coming down. And you can see here how much massively bigger the new ridge timbers are compared to the old one. You can't even see the old <laughs> ridge timber there. Almost impossible to see it. That is the old ridge there. So that is what a four by one by the looks of it. Maybe a six by one at a, at a push. Might be a six by one. And then we've got the new big 10 by two. So that's two to five by 50 millimeter ridge timber running all the way across there. Six by two or 150 by 50 jack rafters coming off the ridge. 
And then you can just about see in the distance there the new ceiling joists and they're the 9 by 2 so 200 mil by 50 mil ceiling joists spanning all the way from left to right which again they are massively bigger than the existing ceiling joists that were already in. So hopefully that makes sense. As I say the old roof used to finish here. That's where the jack rafters came down from this point here to form the end of the hipped roof. So as I say, we've got these two steels in. This is the one that runs above the bathroom. You can barely see it, but there it is there. So it's a crank beam running all the way down to the bathroom. And the other one is, oh, you can't see it from here. So we'll crawl through and I'll show you in a minute. And then we've got a wall plate on top of that. That's just offering a bit of extra support to attach these beams onto. So we've got one on this side here that is cut, compound cut at the top here to support the old ridge and exactly the same over on the left hand side there as well. And then we've got this central support in the middle. These are all 100 by 100 and that goes all the way down to this 200 by 50 double beam running all the way along. Let's crawl into the new section of loft and I'll show you stuff in here. Ignore the wiring and stuff that is literally in the process of being out, sorted out by the electrician at the moment. But you can just about now see, it's a bit dusty, I should have cleaned it first, but you can just about see the other steel over there. So that's the other cranked beam sitting over the bedroom ceiling, wall plate on top, support beam on the right, support beam on the left. And then, as I say, the only reason we've got this big 200 mil beam here is to support this beam in the middle and all that does is it offers a little bit of additional support for the end of the new ridge. This whole new hipped roof could be freestanding by my understanding. It's been designed in such a way that it just completely disregards the existing hipped roof and has these supports in place because we can't verify the integrity of the existing hipped roof. We don't know what state the timbers are in. We're not 100% about the sizes. We don't know about the fixings that we use. So I think from a structural engineer perspective, it's easier to just completely disregard the old roof. Again, from here, you've got a really good view of the old hip coming down there with the jack rafters going into it. And then the jack rafters into the new hip coming up there with all of the support beams that we've uh, talked about. Here, by the way, is the vent pipe for the ensuite, and this is going to be the vent pipe for the whole system. So that's going to come up and through, either through a vent tile or just up as a, a pipe straight through the roof on the hip end somewhere around here. We haven't quite decided where yet, and plus we need to run a vent for the extractor out the ensuite as well. So we'll do all that at the same time. That'll be one of the last jobs that we need to get done. But in case you're wondering why there's a random pipe sticking through the roof there but as i say that hopefully explains it steel there steel behind me this big beam running across between the two steels this post sitting on top of the big beam and that post supports the end of the new ridge and obviously along with that on both steels we've got supports for the hip as well. So we've got a support for the new hip on the left, a support for the new hip on the right, and we've got a support for the old hip on the left and the old hip on the right as well. So folks, I hope that all makes a little bit more sense now. I know probably when you first saw the steels going in, it all just looked a bit random and a bit pointless, but it does actually serve a purpose. And if your structural engineer tells you to do something, you do it because if there's any comeback later down the line and something goes horribly wrong or building regs refuse to sign it off because you've just not bothered to get a structural engineer then this would be a very expensive problem to try and fix later down the line it would be very difficult to get those steels in later on but it's all in now so there you go that is how our hipped roof has been extended. I would love to know your thoughts if you do this sort of work on a regular basis. I, I must admit, I've never seen a hipped roof supported like this before. It's certainly unbelievably solid now. And if the rest of the house falls down, it's kind of nice to know that this will still be standing. I forgot to mention as well, yes, time has moved forward a little bit by the time I've 
come up here to film this. You're not going mad, there wasn't a ceiling on this bedroom five minutes ago. Anyway, we'll leave it at that for today. If you're new to the channel, please do subscribe and you can join the mailing list over at gosswithandyman.com. If you want to see a whole bunch of extra videos, head over to the member zone. You can also go to selfbuildextension.co.uk and there's a whole load of extra detailed information about this project on there as well. So hopefully you found that useful. Links to all of that in the description below. For now, take care folks, be nice to one another and we shall see you next time. Tatty bye.